I've just decided that they can all join me today because I've made my bed and they're there and I don't want to mess up my bed for the sake of the video so they're here. In their prime, romantic poets were the bad boys, but now they're little more than pretentious twats who like to pipe up in English lessons to prove how smart they are. Hi, my name's Ava, and some of popular culture's most famous figures come from the unlikeliest of places. And what with it being October, I thought it would be fitting to look into one of the scariest people ever. Lord Byron, a romantic poet and a truly terrifying man when you look into his personal life. But more importantly, we'll be looking at how he inspired people such as Dracula, Edward Cullen, and me when I was 12. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Byron to Vampire Pipeline. Lord Byron was born as George Gordon Byron in 1788. He came from a family full of chaos, with his father being nicknamed Mad Jack and his uncle having killed a distant cousin. And weirdly enough, that wasn't the worst thing that this family did with distant cousins. At the age of 10, George became Baron Byron of Rochdale and inherited Newstead Abbey in Nottinghamshire. Throughout his life, Byron was known for being incredibly sexually promiscuous, having multiple affairs with women, including distant cousins and apparently his own half-sister. He had three daughters with these women, the most notable of them being Ada Lovelace, the mother of the modern computer, which is just the most random thing. Apparently Ada's mother didn't want her ending up like her father, which is why she was taught mathematics. And it's amazing to think that we probably wouldn't have had the computer if Lord Byron wasn't such a massive slut. Mum, I really don't want to do this. Why can't I just, like, sit around and do nothing like any other respectable woman of the era? Oh, come on, Ada. Look, doing this mathematics will help get the craziness out of you. What craziness? The inherited craziness. What inherited craziness? I haven't inherited any craziness. Just, just look at your father, darling. Yeah, you know what, I'll do it. Byron was revered for being dark and promiscuous and his romantic and sexual poetry granted him a very large fan base. They called themselves the Byromaniacs and would sometimes send fan letters to Byron. Some of them containing things such as bloody pubes. His personality awarded him with the title of Mad, Bad and Dangerous to Know. This title was given to him by Caroline Lamb, a fellow writer and another one of his mistresses. His personality would also inspire what we call the Byronic Hero, a character in literature is known for being dark, mysterious and arrogant. Personally, I think I could name a few Byronic heroes in my personal life. After rumours of the affair with his sister started to spread, Byron decided to leave England for the summer of 1816. He went to Lake Geneva in Switzerland, where he rented a place called Villa Diodati. He travelled with his doctor called John Polidori, and whilst he was there he met two very famous figures, Mary and Percy Shelley. 1816 was called the year without the summer because the weather was so bad. During this summer, the group decided to stay in and write together, like the group of nerds would do during wet play at primary school. But this trip was one of major literary advancements. It was here where Mary Shelley first drafted Frankenstein, Byron was working on Child's Pilgrimage, and his doctor was coming up with something on his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, literally, literally, literally. Why aren't any of you listening to my story? Look, Mard, yeah, you know, we'd all love to hear more about Liechtenstein, but I don't know. There's just too much sexual tension in this room at the moment. What? I mean, look around. I've had affairs with everyone here. What? Yeah, you know, there's your stepsister Claire, your gorgeous fiancé Percy, and, uh... Where's John? You mean to tell me you've had sex with everyone here? Almost everyone. If you, uh, catch my drift. No, 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 no. Don't stop it, you're putting me off. Three years later, The Vampire was published, based off of a short story Byron told to the group. 
It's also rumoured that the main character, Lord Ruthven, was based off of Byron's own personality. Now this does check out, because the vampire Ruthven in the novella was dark, mysterious, and seductive. In America, Uriah Darcy took advantage of the story's popularity, publishing The Black Vampire and still spelling it wrong. Charles Nodier, a French playwright, then wrote a theatrical adaptation of Polidori's story, and in a stroke of genius, he called it Le Vampire, and for the first time ever, spelt it right. The performances of this play started a proper vampire craze throughout Europe. Gogol, Dumas and Tolstoy, no not that one, also wrote their own sharp toothed stories, taking inspiration from Polidori. Sheridan Le Fanu then revolutionised the genre by giving us our first lesbian vampire in Carmilla. This all culminated in Bram Stoker writing Dracula in 1897. Stoker's novel still took inspiration from Polidori, but this defined the genre. I, I mean, probably defined it. I'm actually meant to be reading this for my literature coursework, but I haven't been asked to read it yet. Opera, radio, television and film adaptations all came afterwards, developing the vampire into one of the most popular Halloween costumes today. So there we go, Byron inspired the man bat, Polidori penned the work and the Shelleys just sat and watched it happen. Before I round off the video, I've actually been to Byron's house of Newstead Abbey, so I thought I would do a small slideshow of pictures. Here is a normal person dressed up as a vampire. And here is me, dressed as the Lord Byron version of the vampire, in the dress-up part of the tour. Here is me standing in front of the ruins of Byron's house. Much like the ruins of Whitby Abbey which inspired Stoker to write Dracula, which BOOM! I've also been to. And here is me in Byron's bedroom, clearly discomforted by the idea that many incestuous affairs happened right where I was standing. Thank you for watching today's video. Please remember to like, subscribe and follow my Instagram whilst I start reading Dracula. I want to suck your blood. I also want you to have a bloody great day. Bye bye.